Hi, Jasmine. How are you? Mommy's going to read you your favorite book. And we're going to start with book number four. And here's the book. Stories for four-year-olds. Birthday Surprise on Mummy's birthday, Tilly wanted to make something great. Then suddenly, Tilly had an idea of what she could create. She put on her t-shirt and her rainbow shorts, oops, t-shirt and rainbow shorts. Then Tilly went to the cupboard to pull out all sorts. There were pens and papers and paper galore. Tilly spread them all over the floor. Splat went the pink paint. And the red and the blue splodge with the tissue paper glitter and glue. Mommy called Tilly, I've got something for you. Mom gasped when she saw the state of Tilly. She started to laugh and Tilly felt silly. I made this for you, Mommy, she said, for your birthday. If you don't like it, I'll put it away. It's fantastic, said Mom. I love every single part. The best bit is you, Tilly. You're a work of art. Tilly had glitter on her hands and all over her nose. She had paint in her hair and all down her clothes. Thank you, Tilly, said Mom. It's the most wonderful card. You're very kind and you've worked so hard. Now it's upstairs with you and into the tub to wash all that paint off. Rub it up, dub. Mom was happy and Tilly was happy too. She had fun with her paints, her brushes, and glue. Mom thought Tilly was terribly clever. She was definitely having the Best birthday ever. Aha, uh -huh. this is Dan, and this is a story of Dan's dinosaur. Ding dong, went the doorbell on Dan's birthday. It was a parcel from his granddad. He lived very far away. Dan tore off the wrapping paper. His eyes opened wide. Dan guessed of the magic dinosaur book inside. Cool, said Dan. He quickly dashed off with a book. He ran up to his bedroom to take a good look. In the book, some dinosaurs were big and others were small. They're brilliant, thought Dan. I like the baby ones best of all. I wish, I wish, he said, that I had my own dinosaur. Suddenly, whoosh, the book fell to the floor. The book gurgled, it shivered and shook. You'll just never guess what came out of that book. First there was a leg and some feet, then pink toes, then other legs, some spikes, a tail, and a nose. That thing looked at Dan and gave a huge roar. Uh-oh, said Dan, it's a dinosaur. Downstairs, Mom said, what was that? Nothing, replied Dan, I stood on the cat. The dinosaur immediately dived into Dan's closet. Then it ran out again and left a smelly deposit. Ew, yuck, cried Dan, holding his nose. I have to be very careful where that dinosaur goes. The dinosaur thundered down the stairs to the hall. It shook all the furniture and the pictures on the wall. It ate all the cat's biscuits and even Dan's sister's toys. Oh, Dan, said Dad, don't make so much noise. Then when Dad heard Dad's angry voice, he knew he didn't have a choice. If Dad opened the shed door to discover a dinosaur there, he'd never recover. So Dan wished the dino dinosaur back into the book. Just then, the shed door creaked open wide. Pop! Swish! Dad very carefully stepped inside. You were up to something, I know, said Dan. I think it's time you went back to bed. Dad smiled secretly and shuffled across the floor. Never again would he wish for a dinosaur. If I were a pirate, I'd be fiercer than the rest. I'd fight scary sea monsters and fight treasure in a chest. I'd have pirate adventures, but I'd always be home for tea. Or I'd say to mom and dad, here's a present for me. If I were a fairy, I would have lovely fluttery wings and flick my pretty flowers and dance and enchanted rings. The other fairies would say hello and give me a special name. I would be called Bluebell and join in their fairy game. If I were a princess, I'd have a kingdom made of sweets. I'd ride on my royal pony, giving everybody treats. I'd wear a diamond tiara and a sparkly dress. Your Highness, my subjects would say, you're a beautiful princess. If I were an explorer, I'd go where no one had gone before. Then I'd fight a dinosaur that growled and snarled and roared. 
I take it home to play with so I would never be bored. If I were a ballerina, I would wear my best tutu. I'd show my ballet teachers all the steps that I could do. You're amazing, she would say. The little party starts, then I dance in the ballet show to everyone's applause. If I were a magician, I'd do some magic tricks. My friends would come to me with things they wish to fix. I'd turn Molly into a fairy and give Josh a new football. Then I'd magic up a feast in a playground for us all. The Golden Rocket Roger was digging in the garden when he found a rocket. He rummaged for his handkerchief and pulled it from his pocket. He rubbed and scrubbed until it shone and gleamed. Crap, said Roger, it's gold. But the rocket wasn't what it seemed. That night in bed when Roger should have been tucked up tight, a noise by the wardrobe woke him up. Click, he switched on the light. The rocket buzzed and sweared. It trembled, wobbled, and shook. Curious, Robert climbed out of bed to take a closer look. Roger touched the rocket. It went spark, fizz, sput, and swoosh. Suddenly, Roger was inside and it shut off with a whoosh. Hello, said a little voice. I'm Arnold. Welcome on board. Thank you for rescuing my rocket. A space trip is your reward. They flew to the moon and Arnold said, Put on this spacesuit, please. Roger floated about and found the moon really was made of cheese. Vroom! Went the rocket past Venus, blasting through the stars. Roger waved to aliens going on their holidays to Mars. Roger saw wonderful creatures floating around in space. The rocket sped to Arnold's planet where Roger played with his friends. This is such fun, he said to Arnold. I don't want it to end. Roger met Arnold's mom and dad. They waved and said hi. Stay for tea, said Arnold's dad. Mom's made me dear pie. What was in the pie? Luckily, Roger would never know. Before he took a single bite, Arnold said, it's time to go. Goodbye, said Roger, waving as the rocket blasted away. I think space is fantastic. I've had a lovely day. Arnold flew Roger home, landing on his bedroom shelf. Suddenly, Roger was his normal self. He leaned down to the rocket and inside saw a smiling face. Thank you, Arnold, he said as the rocket roared back into space. After that, when Roger saw a flash of gold up in the sky, he was sure it was his friend in his rocket flying by. My wishes. If I had magic wishes, I know what I would do. I'd put on my red sneakers and come and call for you. We'd climb on board a shiny train and take a magic ride. We've had such fun together, sitting side by side. Choo-choo! We'd jump up to the highest mountaintop. Slowly over the hill we'd go. Click, clack, no time to stop. Woo-woo! Our train would whiz and zoom down the other side. Soon we'd giggle and squeal on a roller coaster ride. I wish that I were queen and that you were a king. We'd sit on our royal thrones and never do a thing. Butlers would bring us candy and cakes and silver dishes. They'd bow and say, yes, majesties, and grant us all our wishes. We'd ride through an enchanted kingdom in a golden couch. Everyone would wave and cheer on our approach. We'd hold a royal garden party and invite them all to tea. Everyone would have such fun thanks to you and me. I wish to have a sleepover where we crept out at night with a magic lantern by the full moonlight. There we'd meet the fairies. They'd invite us to fairyland. We'd have a fairy feast and play in the fairy band. Then we'd creep back in and snuggle up to sleep, remembering adventures in a dream so deep. I would wish that we could always be together and play, that you'd be my special friend who never gets away. The End Stories for Four-Year-Olds